let's talk about interpreting a chemical equation and what the numbers in these equations really mean. So the coefficients in the balanced reactions, these numbers right here. What those refer to is the quantities of each of the um, elements or compounds listed that you need to do this reaction. So what, what it really means is that four atoms of aluminum react with three molecules of oxygen to give you two molecules of aluminum oxide. And so we can use these to predict how much we need or how much we can get out of a given reaction. Um, and we can also make something called a mole ratio. And a mole ratio is just the ratio of any of these two quantities. So for example, four moles of aluminum using this four to two moles of aluminum oxide. So that's one possible mole ratio or three moles of oxygen to two moles of aluminum oxide. So you see the three and the two. Or four moles of aluminum can give you three, you'll need three moles of oxygen. So these are called mole ratios and we can use them to calculate how much we might need of um, different reactants or how much product we can get. So let's look at some example problems here and see how we'll use a mole ratio to solve these. So the first one says, how many moles of aluminum are needed to produce two moles of aluminum oxide? So to get two moles, can you see that it takes four moles of aluminum? So I can solve it just by looking at it with this one, but let me show you how the math works because sometimes the numbers aren't as simple and you can't just do them in your head. So our given in this case is the two moles of aluminum oxide. So that's what we start with. Two moles Al2O3. And then our conversion is going to be a mole ratio. And now we want moles of aluminum oxide on the bottom because that's what's in the numerator. That's our given, so that's going in the denominator. And in the numerator is our find, moles of aluminum. So we want moles of Al there. And now the numbers for these I haven't put in yet, but they're going to come straight from the balanced reaction. So we look at aluminum, it has a 4. So this is going to be a 4. And aluminum oxide, it has a 2. So that's going to be a 2. And so now our moles of aluminum oxide cancel, and we get our answer. The twos also can cancel, and that's four moles of Al, which we could tell by inspection as well. All right, try the next one and then pause it and, and see if you can do it yourself. So this question, how many moles of aluminum oxide can be produced from one mole of aluminum? So this is our given, the one mole of aluminum. And our conversion, our find is Al2O3, so that goes on the top, moles of Al2O3. And on the bottom goes moles of aluminum. And then we get the numbers from the reaction. So you see this is just the reverse mole ratio. It's four for the aluminum, two for the aluminum oxide. And so that equals two over four, 0 0.5 moles of Al2O3. So if we had one mole of aluminum, we could make half a mole of aluminum oxide. And then the last one, again, try it on your own. How many moles of aluminum are needed to completely react with six moles of oxygen? This time the six moles of oxygen is our given. Six moles of oxygen. And then our conversion, this time we want moles of oxygen on the bottom, moles of oxygen, and the number in front of it is at three, so we put a three there. Our find is moles of aluminum. So this one they're asking us, if you have six moles of the one reactant, how much of the other reactant do you need? So we're gonna put four moles of aluminum here. The moles of oxygen cancel, um, the 6 and the 3 can reduce, and this turns out to be 8 moles 
of Olivia. So let's look at how we would do the problem if we were given grams instead of moles. So this is a mass to mass or a gram to gram problem. And um, if you look at our given, here's our given, 16.0 grams of aluminum oxide. And here's our find, grams of aluminum. So we're given grams. Now, in order to use these numbers in the reaction, the 3, the 4, and the 2, we've got to be in moles or in atoms. Um, so the steps we're going to have here, if we're given grams, first we've got to change that to moles. And we use the molar mass to do that. Then we can use the mole ratio to get from moles of given to moles of find. And then we're going to use the molar mass again to get back to grams. So let's look at how we do that. Um, so we start with our 16.0 grams of Al2O3. Now the first thing that we need is the molar mass of aluminum oxide. I'm sorry, this didn't quite look like a 16. There you go. So I have my periodic table here. We're going to have to find aluminum. We have 2 times uh, 26.98, and then oxygen is 3 times 16.00, okay? And if we add this up, 26.98 times 2 plus 48. And that gives me 101.96 at grams per mole, and that's the molar mass that we need here. And so we see we have grams in the numerator, so we need the 101.96 grams of Al2O3 per one mole Al2O3. Okay, so first we get it to moles. Our next conversion is going to be our mole ratio. So the grams have canceled. And so here, we need moles of Al2O3 on the bottom, okay? And that has a 2 with it. So we put 2 moles Al2O3 down here. And we want aluminum on the top. But that has a 4. 4 moles of aluminum goes on the top. So that's the mole ratio step that comes from the balanced reaction. So now our moles of aluminum oxide cancel. And our last step, since we were asked for grams, we're at moles, we need the molar mass of aluminum. So I put one mole of aluminum on the bottom. And it is from my periodic table, 26.98 grams of aluminum. And that'll give me my answer. All right, so I go to my calculator. I do 16 divided by 101.96 times 4 divided by 2 times 26.98 equals, and then I'm going to round to three figures. So I'm going to call it 8.47. grams of aluminum. And that's the answer to that one. All right, let's look at the next one. And pause the video. Give it a try on your own first, and then watch how it's done. So this time, our find grams of aluminum oxide produced from 10 grams of oxygen. All right, so that's our find. 10 grams of, our, our given, sorry, 10.0 grams of oxygen is where we start. Okay. So first thing, get it to moles. So oxygen molar mass, 32. So 32.00 grams of oxygen per one mole of oxygen. All right. So now the grams cancel. Now we're at moles. Our next step is the mole ratio. So we want moles... O2 on the bottom, because that's in our numerator here, and the number is a 3. So this is the piece that comes from your balanced reaction. 3 moles oxygen 
Our find is aluminum oxide, so that has a 2. 2 moles Al2O3. And our moles of oxygen cancel. And then our last step is to get to grams. And we already added up that molar mass. It's the 101. So I'll have one mole of aluminum oxide down here to 101.96 grams of aluminum oxide. Okay, and these moles cancel, and that gives us our answer. So going to the calculator, 10 divided by 32 times 2 divided by 3 times 101.96 equals, um, and again, three significant figures, so I'll go with 21.2, grams of Al2O3, and that's our answer. That's how many grams of aluminum oxide can be produced. So let me just summarize what we're doing here. So we start with our given. That's our first piece, the given number, unit, and compound. Then the next thing we do is divide by given molar mass. Okay, and not that the molar mass is given, but the compound that we're given, the oxygen, will divide by its molar mass. That's our first step. The second step is the mole ratio. And this piece comes from the balanced reaction. This is where you get the numbers from the balanced reaction. The given goes on the bottom, the fine goes on the top. And the last step is to multiply by the find molar mass. So whatever compound you're trying to find, you'll multiply by its molar mass. And that's the steps that you'll always do in a mass-to-mass -mass problem. Now C is a little bit different because look at how this one is stated. The question is how many atoms of aluminum, not grams, atoms, are needed to produce 1.0 grams of aluminum oxide. All right, so we're going to start the problem the same way. We're going to start with our given. 1.0 grams of aluminum oxide. Okay, and then the grams have to go to moles. So we'll use this molar mass again on the bottom. 101.96 grams of Al2O3 per one mole. Al2O3. Okay, so that gets us to moles. The next step is also going to be like we've been doing, the mole ratio. So we want two moles of aluminum oxide, the two coming again from the balanced reaction, and what we want on top is aluminous. So four moles of Al goes right here, again, from the reaction, 4. And then the moles of aluminum oxide cancel. Now the last step, instead of going to mass, what we're going to do is go to number of atoms. And so for this conversion, we're going to use Avogadro's number, the 6.02. So we want the one mole on the bottom. One mole has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And that's atoms or molecules, but in this case we're talking about atoms. All right, so the moles of aluminum cancel, and that gives us our number. So I go to my calculator, 1 divided by 101.96. I'm going to simplify that and just say times 2 times 6.02 exponent 23 equals, and I get um, and I can only keep two significant figures here because it's 1.0. So I'm going to go with 1.2. 1 1.2 times 10 to the... Oh, I did this wrong. Let me try it again. 1 divided by 101.96 times 2 times 6.02 exponent 23. Okay, times 10 to the 22nd atoms of Al. And so you can go 
you can really go any way you want. You can, if you just have moles to moles, all you need is the mole ratio. If you have mass or number, you convert to moles and then use the mole ratio. So here it is typed up, so it's a little more clean. And here's some more practice problems. So I'm not going to go through all these. I want you to just pause it, try these problems, and then um, look at the answers. Here come the answers. <laughs> 